T-minus 10 to episode 1000. It's Monday, October 27th, and you're listening to the Geek at Geek News Central. This is show number 990, sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com. Get a WordPress builder site, domain name, and Outlook email address for just a dollar a month for 12 months, or pick up a domain name for a dollar 49. All my specials can be found at geeknewscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. Hey folks, got a great show lined up for you tonight. Uh, we're tweaking things here a little bit. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go fly. Microphone. We're go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right, I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in... Five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to Geek in the Central Course. My name is Todd Cochran. I'm glad to be here with you. Got a great show lined up for you tonight. And uh, if the audio is funky, it's my fault. <laughs> Um, and I'll talk about what's going on here in just a few minutes and tell you what we're doing. But, uh, hey, I want to give a warm, warm welcome to uh, all of the Ohana, all the longtime listeners and viewers of the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for staying subscribed. And, of course, uh, we want to welcome anyone that's brand new to the show. And I tell you, you've, you've, you've checked in a great show. We are now really on the march here, 990 episodes and really, that's this. We're on the major countdown here to uh, to show 1,000. But we want all of you to take some time and make sure you get over to the uh, the the uh, basically the home site at geeknewcentral.com. You'll find plenty of subscription options there in the second column of the website. I really don't need to go any further than that. And uh, we've got options for Android users, whether you're using iTunes, whatever it may be, you can get subscribed to this podcast uh, very easily and. Uh, Google Plus, Facebook, the whole nine yards. Of course, if you uh, really just want to stay connected, you can uh, follow me on, on Twitter at Geek News. And, of course, uh, follow us on uh, all the major social media sites. But uh, the main thing is get subscribed to this show. That way you'll never miss a single episode. While you're over there at geeknewscentral.com, make sure you get signed up for the uh, newsletter as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an email immediately following this show, within about uh, 30 minutes or so. And it's going to drop in everyone's uh, email box. It's going to basically have all the links to everything I talked about tonight, a link to the podcast that's been uploaded, the audio version of it. And that'll be kind of as a kickstart reminder to you that uh, the show is available and uh, to definitely uh, tune in. The show is timely on content, so we definitely want to uh, don't waste too much time. Don't come in uh, four or five days later because you're going to be like, dude, that's that's old news. We want you listing within the first 24 to 36 hours of the uh, the show release, which is every Tuesday and Friday morning. Well, I tell you, lots going on here. Um, and uh, the studio, if you, if the, those of you that are very observant may see something just a little bit different in the studio. And uh, I'll point that out. Those of you that are watching, you can kind of look around and see if you see anything different while we're... Uh, Doing a little shout out to our sponsor here at Geek News Central. Of course, hey, one thing else also as well is you can email me directly, geeknews at, uh, at gmail.com. And uh, that's really a quick way to uh, to drop me a line and let me let, let me know what you think about the show or if you find something cool. And boy, some of you found some really cool stuff this past couple of days. And we'll talk about that here in just a few seconds as well. But of course, we want to thank our sponsor, GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy's been uh, a sponsor here at this show since July of 2005, and I am forever grateful for them basically keeping us uh, moving here, keeping my family fed, <laughs> keeping a roof over my head, all that all that good stuff. And, and really, the reason they keep doing that is because you guys keep uh, basically hooking up with the deals that they provide every month. I don't know what's coming in November. I've heard nothing from my... Uh, my uh, organizer, or basically the guy that I work with over at GoDaddy. But right now, 30% off on all new orders by using the promo code GNC30. 
1-800-227-5530. You can get a .com for just $1.49 on new or transferred in domains. Again, $1.49 by using the promo code GEEK149. Or you can get a domain name, website builder, account, a Microsoft Outlook email address, all for a dollar a month for 12 months by using the promo code GNCGOT. And, of course, we've got lots of additional hosting accounts, WordPress hosting, uh, managed WordPress hosting with a free domain, standard economy hosting with a free domain, 50% off new hosting plans, 50% off first 12 months of business website builder, and just it goes on and on. So you'll definitely want to look at all the codes at geekingcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy and, and save some money. This dollar deal seems to be the one that's hot and heavy right now. As a matter of fact, I've gotten a few emails from GoDaddy because I, you know, I use their services, of course. And uh, it basically leads me back to this, you know, this great deal again, a domain, website builder, and email. So really, I want you guys to take a look at that. And for those of you that say, oh, man, I don't want to start a website. It's going to be too much work. It's going to, you know, I don't have any design skills. Don't worry. They understand that. And they've really done everything for you, uh, providing templates. And, and it's really simple. Uh, again, no technical skills required. And again, you can choose from a large library of customal, customizable designs. And uh, that's what it's all about. Make it easy for you to get online and do cool stuff. If you're going to become a podcaster, we want you to go with that WordPress option. That's the best way to go to get started as a podcaster. Don't go with the website builder. Go with the WordPress hosting. Um, that's a critical piece in the uh, full scheme of things. But we want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here. Find all my promo codes at geekingcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. All right, let's just talk a little bit about the studio. Um, about, and I, I, I don't know if I told you guys this, um, maybe a year ago, um, had a little problem with the, the microphone amplifier that I use, that I've used for years. It's, it's a quite expensive. It's a Solo 610. Um, it's a fantastic preamp for, for any, any, really any mic. It's got tube technology for those of you guys that are kind of, you know, kind of up to speed on what the tube technology brings you. It just quit working. And, uh, you know, things have been busy. I just took it out of the pipeline. I, you know, I disconnected it and rehooked this microphone directly into the mixer and turned the mixer amplifier up a little bit and made a few adjustments and off we went. Well, I finally, you know, just like anything else, stuff piles up here and I don't know what it is. I, I, I guess, <laughs> uh, you know, it, I really at some point, if I would ever have a personal assistant, they would be like all this little nagging stuff that drives me crazy. Um, would get done and uh, you know that low hanging fruit and so I'd send it off to Solo to get it repaired or actually UA audio or U audio and uh, they called me like two weeks later and said dude the, the thing's working and I said how can it be working because I've got the I got the fuse right here <laughs> and he goes no no we put a fuse in it and it's working and I said well I tested the fuse that came out and uh the fuse, uh, the fuse was good, but I had, I just had neglected to put it back in. And he says, "Well, you, you sure that that fuse is good?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's, it's good." And, and I have a meter here. I'm an electronics guy, and I, you know, I retested it, and the, the fuse is still good. Um, but they put a fuse in it, and it, and it worked. Now, as soon as I got home and I plugged it in, the first thing I did was put my fuse back in it, and it worked. So I don't know what happened. During shipping, something got bounced, banged around, who knows. But, you know, it's the second time in a row, you know, the Mac Pro going to the Apple Store and it worked. And then the, the preamplifier. So, you know, I'm, this is not supposed to happen to me. <laughs> anyway, they shipped it back. And this weekend I put it back in the, uh, in the pipeline. So it goes from the microphone to the preamplifier to the mixer through some processors. I've got a compressor up there, an equalizer. And really, I've been trying to dial it back in and I'm not there yet and Paul I know you're listening I've been working with Paul a good friend of mine out in New York Paul's a long time uh, basically a long time fan of the show he's been around since a really single you know in the early early days and uh, Paul is uh, kind of a, a bit of a mentor and uh, he uh, basically started smacking me inside the head here a couple of weeks ago saying, dude, your audio's jacked. You know, what are you doing? Pay attention. And really what it was is um, 
I had, uh, some of you may have heard it in headsets. I may have been clipping a little bit from time to time. And he says, you know, this thing is not right. And so we went through a process and he sent me a bunch of emails and some things to try and do and some suggestions. And we got everything dialed in on the last new media show where I was really, he was happy, I was happy. And now I put this back in the loop and it's going to completely make us start over again. But Paul, I hope that the... Uh, I hope that the when the audio gets done tonight and gets put out that you're happy with it. We'll we'll see because I'm sure you're going to have some feedback. But we may have some frequency tweaking, and I definitely got to get on the equalizer and get that kind of retapped in. So if I sound a little funny today, it's because this thing isn't quite where I want it yet. So uh, uh, just kind of stick with me here. It's you know one of those things where it's going to take me a few shows of twisting knobs and turning and making level changes to get it where I want it. So enough on that, but if, hopefully the, uh, the audio is good. Okay. And of course, you know, listening to it in my own, I, I'm never satisfied. We all hate our own voice, right? And, uh, listening to it live and then listening to it back recorded, it always sounds a little different, but, um, that's just kind of the way it is. Enough to be talking about the stupid audio. All right. Uh, this past Saturday, um, had an interview with Dave Jackson on the new media show. And uh, Dave is, uh, is the new director of podcasting over at, uh, at New Media Expo and uh, talked about his process and everything that's going on. So it was a great show. So I had a lot of fun with him. Uh, Rob and I did. And then uh, Sunday, of course, uh, reorganizing stuff back here got me into the back of the boxes. And I, I about had a heart attack because you turn things around and you're like, <gasps> where'd all this dirt come from? And you get the vacuum cleaner out and you start wiping things down. And Hawaii is just famous for this red dirt and um, probably from the high iron content and everything from, you know, you know how these islands were formed with, uh, with uh, you know, volcanoes and lava and We'll talk about, matter of fact, some lava stuff going on over in the Big Island. But um, it's just invasive, and it's horrible because it's very corrosive. And if you're not on top of it, it can be it can do bad things, electronics and everything else. That's why printers, and I got a printer right over here that maybe three years, four years, if I'm lucky, before it will say, eh, I'm done. And... Um, but uh, even with covers on it and stuff, it just it, it they don't last here because of this this red dirt is just I mean tough on stuff. So um, yeah, it was I was kind of wanking about it a little bit on. Uh, and I'm sorry I just said that to the UK folks. Um, the uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get 50 emails now. Anyway, um, so. And just complaining about it on online and people are like, why don't you put air conditioning on it? My, my electricity bill's already $400 plus, folks. So, you know, AC, uh, you just can't afford that extra $100 a month on electricity bill. It's, it's horrible enough as it is. So anyway, to cleaned up the office a little bit and we made some changes. And I'm going to be doing some gear sale. I've got a bunch of gear here that I need to sell. Microphones, some gear that I haven't, to, that I don't use anymore that's perfectly fine. Uh, that's been, you know, put in boxes and put away, and it's not obviously having impact from this red dirt like I was just talking about. But uh, anyone that's looking for some audio stuff, I'm going to have some stuff for sale here very, very, very soon. I have one blog post, and I'll put up my prices, and then first come, first serve. Okay, I have to admit, I got Bree sent over an email, and Bree's one of our longtime listeners. Bree lives in the D.C. area, and uh, she said, Todd, another weird one. And uh, at the end of the show, we're going to talk about a UFO entering the sun. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you heard me. A UFO entering the sun. Now, <laughs> you're all rolling your eyes. Yep, well, I'll, I'll take you to an, a real interesting article that will make you go, hmm, just a little bit. But anyway, we'll get, that, get to that at the end of the show tonight. Um, hey, I do want to thank all of you that are supporting the show with a contribution monthly uh, by being part of our GNC 1000, part of the Ohana here. And I want to can, uh, basically encourage you to get over to geekingcentral.com forward slash insider and become an insider here and become part of our, again, part of our GNC 1000. So um, we'll be thanking the, uh, the folks that are contributing to the show on the next episode I do want to appreciate you just basically give that shout out there. Hopefully tonight we'll bring value for value for you here and you'll get something out of tonight's show and feel that I've saved you some money or give you some information you didn't know already. 
And let me look at my list here and make sure I've got everything covered. Um, also, uh, if you are a contributor to the show, make sure you send Sam an email at insider at geeknewcentral.com. Sam will get you on all the uh, insider mailing list so that uh, you can participate and get direct mailings from me. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, move into the tech. That's what you're waiting for, all of you. All right, can you believe it? We're at 990 episodes. I actually thought we'd have been to 1,000 already, but uh, I took too much time off this year. <laughs> you know, very, very soon, what I would consider to be the geek move of the year is going to be available in movie theaters. Interstellar is coming. And if you don't want to have any spoilers, uh, all those cool kids are getting access to the preview of Interstellar. The Verge being no exception. They've got a good write-up. And there are, again, some uh, spoilers here. So I'm just going to tell you, be careful. Don't read the whole article. But everything I'm hearing, um, the coolness factor on this movie is going to be good. And they're hyping it to kind of like, uh, you know, many of us uh, are, 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 you know, basically cult fans of 2001 A Space Odyssey. And uh, this is, has the same type of, yeah, I think it's going to have that same type of uh, AKA cult following once it's uh, on the street. So uh, look forward to seeing this. And uh, if it's as, if it lives up to its hype, it's going to be a great movie for for all of us that are that are nerds out there. All right, the first thing I really do want to talk about tonight, in the big you know, big scheme of things, is Amazon's an Amazon's announcement today of the Fire Stick. And boy, cool name, very 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 cool name. You know, Fire TV, Fire Stick, and uh, Amazon is bringing it on. And I've been, um, I was thinking about this uh, today a little bit. I, I uh, in my bedroom, I have a Roku, I have a Amazon Fire TV, I have a Chromecast, and then just regular television. In my living room, I have a Chromecast, a Apple TV, a Roku and no Amazon Fire TV in the in the living room. So I'm just kind of been playing through my head for a better word what's getting more play right now. And and I find myself going to Roku a lot now and and jumping into Netflix or a couple of the other channels and I find myself not using the Roku as much as I used to and I'm kind of surprised at that. Um, and actually it concerns me a little bit because obviously, you know, we've got the channel over there, the tech podcast channels on the Roku and ProMed Network and Blueberry, all our channels are on, on that device. And, uh, so, you know, usually I'm over there kind of scheming through things, but just kind of on leisure time, I've been spending a lot of time with the Amazon Fire TV. So I ordered two of these today, the two of these Amazon Fire at 20 bucks. For you know, and I'm thinking about it just for a couple of days here for Prime members are twenty dollars. So if you're looking for stocking stuffers, and you're a Prime member, you can do all your Christmas shopping here for all your geek friends. I mean, boom, you have it done at twenty dollars a pop. You know, these are working for stocking stuffers. You name it, you can't beat this price. And and, and I was looking at the specs on the Amazon Fire Stick. Not bad. It, it's really, uh, it's better than the Chromecast. Um, it comes with a remote. That's big. Um, so we will see where this, you know, how the performance is. Uh, you know, as soon as I get it, I'll plug it in and, and I'll give you guys an update here. But, you know, everyone's saying, I think it's got eight gigs of onboard storage. It's got, uh, um, I think the actual operating system operates in the one gig of RAM. Uh, so, you know, it's got, uh, you know, some pretty decent specs. And again, the best part is it's got a remote control. Now, I don't know if it's going to be able to do the same thing as the Amazon Fire TV where you're going to have voice commands or, but it's, I, I'm really going to be, you know, excited to see where this leads. And I, you know, I was talking with, uh, Angelo about this today and I'm like, we got to figure out this is going to grow and, you know, really building channels for multiple set-top boxes 
is incredibly expensive. It's incredibly expensive to support, maintain, because if you, let's say you just do a one year update and update the code once a year, you know, you're looking at a couple of weeks, you know, to basically get in, make the changes, update the graphics, you know, all those hours. And then you push the update up and, uh, and you do that for every app. And the next thing you've got a couple of months of man years involved in maintaining these channels on these different apps. So I'm thinking what's going to happen here is the Fire Stick is going to be similar to the Chromecast. You're going to be able to push stuff from your mobile device to it. So we'll see where this leads and if this actually does happen. Now, um, I actually heard that Microsoft has a stick that you can pre-order too that will basically mirror from what's on your computer screen up onto um, a, a big screen TV. And I'm I actually had missed that announcement that was made last month, but I'll have that uh, article linked in the show notes tonight so you guys can, you know, those of you that want to pick up one of those as well, I think they're pre-ordering those a little more expensive, but uh, lots of options here. And it's, it's getting a little bit kind of crazy on the uh, the number of devices that we've got available, but, um, and I don't know if I'm going to even, you know, I, I bought two, probably one to give away on the show, and one to use here locally. I've got the Amazon Fire TV, so I really don't need another Amazon Fire product unless I use it in the living room, which I may do. But, uh, you know, at this point, I have to start unplugging devices. <laughs> but the device I use the least is the Apple TV. That is the device that is used absolutely the least. The only time we load the Apple TV anymore is to have it go through, like we got friends and family over, and we put, out, put it on and let it, just do the slideshow through this year's pictures. Um, let that play on the TV while we have guests here at the house or maybe you know, play some music or something. That's all I use the Apple TV for. So uh, Roku and Amazon Fire TV are still kings in my household when it comes to the set-top boxes. But I'm, I'm finding the Amazon Fire TVs getting a little bit more of my attention right now just because I'm not finding as much stuff on Netflix on the Roku than, than I used to. All right, so we're going to switch gears here a little bit, and we're going to talk about uh, Apple Pay and uh, corporate greed at Rite Aid and CVS stores are really on display here. They um, This weekend, Rite Aid and CVS suddenly and very suspiciously um, disabled their NFC payment setups. So you couldn't even go. They had the NFC payment dealios, you couldn't go into a Rite Aid or CVS store and use NFC to pay with your Apple device. And they basically are holding up both middle fingers to Apple and saying no. Well, what this is, it's purely a power play because what's going on is that they part of a, they're part of a group called the Merchant Customer Exchange, MCE, and wait till you hear about this uh, backward system they're going to try to get you guys to use with your mobile device. Now, that organization is full of big-name retailers like Walmart, Best Buy, Lowe's, and really pretty much every brick-and-mortar giant that really hasn't already kind of, uh, for a better word, self-imploded. So they've got a scheme or a system that basically they're trying to get you to stop using your credit card at their businesses. Because what happens is, is every time you swipe your card at Best Buy or whatever business that's, you know, you're swiping a card, they have to pay a few points to MasterCard or Visa for that banking transaction. And matter of fact, you know, we're taking credit cards over at Raw Voice and it's a little bit crazy. And I actually am to, it brought it up a couple of days ago. I'm like, you know, I'm looking at these, you know, these just transaction fees. And uh, it, it's a significant, and I can understand their, you know, when I'm seeing, when I'm giving so many points away, and I was doing this with PayPal too, don't get me wrong. But it, it, when it when it when it start when you get this you know bottom line at the end of the month that says you paid this much in fees, it really pisses you off because you're like, holy cow, that I gave that much money to Visa, Mastercard, and the banking institution. 
for processing my credit card? There's got to be a better way. And this is what these folks are saying, is that they want all customers to use what's a new system they're developing called Current C. Now, Current C isn't launched yet, and it's, from what everyone's saying, is a mess. Now, what they want you to do is, if you use this app, they want you to register. Okay, now, think about this for a second. Target. Um, I think one of the office stores, a number of stores, have had credit card breaches, right? Where their credit card data has been stolen. And but now, with this new system, they want you to register your bank account. So they want you basically to give them access to debit your account on demand. Now, you guys all know I stopped using a debit card. I don't carry a debit card anymore because a debit card um, essentially is tied directly to your checking account. And when that card, if that card is compromised, they can they can drain your checking account in a hurry. Whereas a credit card, they can still charge a lot of stuff, but you have time to deal with that. You got time to get on the phone, talk to the fraud department, get those charges shut down. You know, and you may not even you may come up on your bill. It may not. You may have to sign an affidavit. Long story short, it's easy to stop bleeding happening when you're using a regular credit card, but not on a debit card. When your debit card is compromised. They can swipe sw until the until the fraud system finds you. They can swipe, 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 suck money out of your checking account, or if it's tied to your savings account, whatever it's tied to, and 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 you're screwed. And you're not maybe gonna, maybe you're gonna have to wait a month or six weeks. You're gonna get your money back potentially over time, but it's not gonna happen that quick. And if you have a house payment to make or whatever it may be, so what these folks want us to do. Walmart, Best Buy, they want us to register our credit, excuse me, our, our um, checking accounts directly with their service. Give them their routing number and give them the account number so that when you go in and do a purchase with them, and basically you're going to have to scan a QRC code and you go up and show it to, it's, it's stupid how they've got it set up. Um, they're just going to draft your account. And what they do is they don't have to pay MasterCard and Visa any more transaction fees when they can just debit your account the amount of money. They do electronic transfer. They get 100% of their cash. They may pay a little bit of a transaction fee, but it's not like this huge credit card fee they're paying. And I can't even pronounce, I can't even say on this show and keep it family safe what everyone is saying about this system it's basically beep backwards okay <laughs> um so are we going to give our credit card our credit i mean excuse me our checking account information to best buy and or to uh cvs or these companies to participate in this merchant customer exchange i don't think so so i don't blame them for wanting to lower their cost. Because I see that on my account every month, and man, it just makes me angry. But it's, it's a cost of doing business, right? It's part of, and if the charges get too high, maybe I have to raise my rates, right? It's just the cost of doing business. It's, you know, it, it is what it is. So um, this MCX system, they shut down NFC. They don't want, they don't want a wide adoption of people using Apple Pay. So what I would suggest to you is if you're an iOS user or if you're an Android user and you try to pay something for something at a store and they're not allowing their NFC payments to go through, you need to ask why. And if you really want to take it to the next level, if you want to move into this digital banking, you walk away. You say, well, fine, I'm not going to buy my, this product. I'm leaving. And leave the stuff. You know, that takes a lot. You went in there and picked two or three things up or maybe a shopping cart full. But to say, forget it, you know, enough of us do that where they won't take the payment um, via our mobile device. Maybe those, you know, because in Japan, people have been doing this for years. You know, they, they can, they're, 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 so, they're so tied in. You can go to a vending machine and put, a, put your phone up against a vending machine and get a Coke. 
out of a vending machine with your phone. You don't you don't have to use you don't have to get your wallet out and you know try to stuff a you know in Japan a, a thousand yen note into the you know into the money hole. You know how the, those machines half the times don't work. They won't take bills. I started to see vending machines now with credit card things on it. That was a little crazy. But, you know, long story short here, the, um, this greed of not wanting Apple Pay to work is, uh, is what basically they've done. So if you, if you walk away from paying for someone, please, please, please send, send me a video of you doing it or send me an email to geeknews at gmail.com. Are you a Verizon user? Now, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm using Verizon right now. But when I read articles that I have come to like to me today, like on Ad Age, it really questioned, I really question my ability to continue to do business with these companies. On Wednesday... Well, what's happened is, is Verizon is looking to target its mobile subscribers now with ads. And, oh, what, where's that coming from? You know, I hate this when we have um, websites that auto start playing audio ads. Let me, let me roll this up. Hang on. So we can't hear that come back through. So what they've done is they bought a company called um, Blue Kai. It's a data, data management provider. And they are going to be basically shoveling ads to us now and redirecting URLs and putting new types of trackers on um, stuff that we're doing with our mobile phones without uh, really... Basically, what you're gonna, what's going to happen now is you're not going to even... They're not going to track you by like... A, uh, your platform, but they are going to have a new way to, to do tracking of people. And uh, they want this data is going to go to third-party vendors who are going to be serving ads to us. Verizon says it's not going to be selling its first-party subscriber data, but rather deploying partnerships with third-party data providers to target Verizon's massive consumer base. And they're doing a cookie alternative from for a marketing space. Um, so basically, this entrance of them buying this company is going to really, basically, we're going to be tracked with this thing called Precision ID. Now, some of this was tested earlier in the year. Back in May, uh, some of this has been, uh, was, was basically published. But they're going to start really going after us in a big way as we're using our mobile devices to, to basically sell against us even better. And, you know, I, I just don't think mobile ads are that effective, but, uh, it is the uh, platform they're trying to reach us on, but these companies know more about us than our wives and you know our wives and kids do. That's for sure. All right, switching gears here. There's a good article, and it's it talked about uh, a thread that happened this weekend on Twitter. Um, it talks about trust in journalism, and while this isn't necessarily a um, tech article, what I want to do is I just kind of want to link up to it because right now we've got. I think we can all agree that there's hardly anyone in the media anymore we can trust. Um, doesn't matter if you're on the right or if you're on the left. You know, doesn't matter. You know, if you're in the middle, doesn't matter if you're uh, uh, what your po politics is. Um, you know, there's a there's a channel for everybody. <laughs> I think we all can agree that. Uh, 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 MSNBC is probably a pretty left. I think we all can agree that uh, um, that Fox is pretty right. I think we all can agree that uh, CNN is uh, a little bit of, well, I think it's more left than right. And then, you know, there's a whole bunch of channels in between, including websites, and they all have their slants, both, you know, from different uh, different perspectives. But there was a time when we could trust journalists to kind of take themselves out of the picture a little bit and you know give us good stories but we're at a point today where the digital world has grown so bad so big and that we're you know the the television and radio stuff has kind of morphed to the sides a little bit that 
people don't know who to trust from a news reporting system. So, you know, there's um, some proposals. Should Google start be signing a, a trust index to people that write articles? But uh, Jeff Jarvis had this huge uh, back and forth um, on Twitter with a bunch of different uh, reporters specifically talking about journalism and trust. And most journalists, oh, you can trust me. I'm very trustworthy. But, you know, we're all human. So, um, and you work for a specific company that wants to spin things a certain way. And if you don't, you're going to find yourself a new job. So uh, I don't think any of us is like politicians. You know, who do we trust these days? I think it's a big, 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 big topic for all of us that live in the digital world. Um, as I go looking at a variety of different sites, sometimes when I find an article that I want to talk about on this show, I'll have to load two or three sites to kind of summarize off each to kind of formulate my opinion because, you know, everyone has a little bit of a different twist on it. And uh, and I also can tell if it's if it's a PR puff piece because oftentimes you'll find a PR puff piece that are on multiple sites. That's a, it looks like a story that's interesting, but the, it's almost exactly the same verbiage, and those I usually throw out. So uh, you know, pitching stories to reporters is a pretty common thing for companies these days. So I have to be real careful, and I'm trying to you know bring you guys news and information. So again, it goes back to that trust factor. Who do we trust? And over the years, I've developed a number of sites that I you know, have a pretty high trust factor with, but at the same time, I'm willing to call a spade a spade when I, when I need to. But do you guys trust what you read on the, on the Internet today? Or do you think there's always an agenda? You know, where are you guys at in the spectrum? Love to hear from you, geeknews at, uh, at gmail.com. Let's talk about self-driving cars. And, you know, of all sites, one that I don't trust is the Motley Fool at Fool.com. <laughs> you know, they got stock pumpers over here. They have people that are shorting stocks. They, You just name it. There are uh, a, a lot of different, uh, you know, articles that oftentimes I, you know, I very rarely read. But I did have to admit that this article today on uh, self-driving cars, uh, written by Anders Byland, uh, was pretty good. And it goes into the politics of why it's going to take so long for what the what Tesla and what BMW and Audi, of course, you've probably seen some of these new Audi commercials with a vehicle that parks itself in the garage, which is really cool. Um, and we know where self-driving cars are headed. But really what it boils down to is we know that the American traffic system is managed state by state, and there's no federal Department of Motor Vehicles. Now, there's a DOT, a Department of Transportation, that really provides official guidance to each state's legislative system, but the DOT's role is simply to provide uh, consultation, leadership, um, a resource, and so forth, but each state has really kind of their own set of rules. So there's really no system to be able to... Um, come to a conclusive decision on when automated vehicles are going to be allowed to basically drive the streets on their own. We'll have to see what happens here. It, they, that's why they feel it could take 10 years just to get through the legislative hurdles. And these companies like Tesla and Audi, they've got huge challenges ahead to you know, build trust with every state that allow these vehicles to operate you know, autonomously on our roads and highways. I think as, you know, those of us that are going to be behind vehicles that are, you know, still controlled by us, we're going to be worried about those vehicles too. And it won't be without, uh, you know, at some point one's going to, going to wreck, someone's going to get killed. You know, we're going to go through all those conversations as we move down the road. But uh, right now there's 22 states that have some autopilot support. So here's where we're at right now. Self-driving cars are now allowed in Nevada, Florida, Michigan, California, and the District of Columbia, at least for testing purposes. States like Texas, Arizona, New Hampshire, and Wisconsin have rejected autonomous car laws, and many states are considering their options right now. Uh, what was the other states? That wasn't all 22 of them. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Does it say? Okay, so here it is. So 
Um, under consideration is Washington, South Dakota, Minnesota, Louisiana, Georgia, South Carolina, New York, New Jersey, uh, Maryland, and again, uh, failed in uh, Oregon, Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, Texas, with uh, Wisconsin, uh, New Hampshire have failed. So, you know, we've got a ways to go here on this uh, automated vehicle stuff. Uh, Hawaii, not even under consideration at this point. I think we'd be the easiest. Traffic doesn't move here very fast at all. It just moves slow. Now, it's almost Halloween. Have you all picked up your Halloween outfits? We were going to go um, downtown. We're going, actually going to Waikiki for Halloween. We had not, have never done that. We've been here for an, uh, 19 years. We've never went into Waikiki for Halloween. And uh, we're considering doing it. I got to talk. And we're, you know, we do stuff as a family. We don't necessarily leave the kids at home. But after I got to talking to some people, <laughs> we decided not to go uh, to Waikiki for Halloween. Because, you know, uh, adults will be adults. And Halloween uh, allows them to dress up in just about any imaginable uh, you know, costume. And, I, and I, my 17-year-old I wasn't so worried about. But my 10-year-old, I think. Uh, it's better for take him trick or treat uh, locally and not be subjected to uh, some uh, inebriated adult uh, wearing some sort of uh, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? So anyway, that happens in every city, so we decided not to go. But uh, all kinds of morbid stuff is coming out uh, in relation to uh, the Halloween season, and uh, there's a good article about uh, what happens to our bodies when we when we die <laughs> uh, at some point in in the future every one of us listening to this show we will we will die hopefully uh, we all live to be a very old age and very long in the tooth and um you know 99 100 110 and heck with the way technology is going i'll even go for 150 if the uh you know if the brain will hold out uh, let's go as long as possible but at some point, uh, every one of us, hearts are going to stop. And what happens when our heart stops? I think we all kind of know ultimately what happens. But they go through the entire, in three minutes, they tell you, <laughs> for a better word, uh, all the science behind what, uh, what happens when, uh, when the tickers quit ticking. And uh, so any cool video, no, no gross stuff, uh, uh, good for the kiddos to watch as well. Some news today as well that Amazon, and this is switching gears completely. I'm jumping around here. I obviously have this show organized real well tonight. But Amazon has bought Comedia Service Rooftop Media to expand digital content. And actually, you know, Amazon had bought Audible. So what they did is the um, Audible division actually bought this comedy service. And I got to thinking about this. Okay, so Audible, there's Audible uh, audio books. Why would... Don Katz and his team by rooftop for the comedy. St uh, it's a little bit uh, disconnect there. I would think Amazon would have a digital arm that would do that, but I guess maybe Audible's their digital arm. Seems a little weird by, but uh, they have picked up rooftop media for original comedy content. How many of you have been watching John Oliver on HBO? John Oliver's... Uh, done a number of videos and he basically he, he basically has this in your face type of uh, rapport attacking different topics this week with sugar and uh, he's got a good piece on that uh this guy's i kind of like some of the stuff he does and again non-tech related but uh more on the media side i thought was cool hey microsoft to be beef well, excuse me microsoft a beef beefed up Where's the beef? Microsoft has beefed up Office 365 with unlimited OneDrive cloud storage. So I guess they figured, uh, hey, we're losing this battle. Let's give them unlimited cloud. <laughs> so uh, this is big. Um, this is really big. Um, wow. 
So again, a seventy dollar personal a seventy dollar per year personal account authorizes non commercial use of one computer and one tab, and and the hundred dollar per year home account authorizes non commercial use of up to five PCs and five tablets. Commercial users must get an Office for Business account, which will get the unlimited storage upgrade in twenty fifteen. So it's going to be a business account. Aha! That is the dirt in the details there. So. Uh, link will be up in the show notes if you want to check that out. Also, Windows 10 will come for the very first time. Windows will come with a command line package manager. So this ought to be cool for those of you that are used to um, basically installing packages like you do on Linux. Um, you know, that uh, app get, install, and then whatever the package may be on Linux, you're going to have a similar type of commands that you're going to be able to do in Windows. Very, very cool. This is awesome. So it's going to be called PowerShell. And uh, there'll be an administrative version and a user's version. So that's cool. So, uh, Jack, I know you're using Windows 10. Dig in, my friend. Tell me what it does. Also, those of you that uh, like a fine scotch or a fine whiskey, you'll be happy to know that uh, a whiskey that was matured for three years at the International Space Station has made it back to Earth. And the Scottish distillery Ard Ardbeg has teamed up with the uh, scientists at Nanorax to basically uh, see the difference, see what happened with the uh, uh, the maturing of the whiskey in oak mini oak containers, uh, and basically they're they're going to be do some comparisons. So the results will be out in 2015. We won't be able to drink any of this stuff, but at least we'll get a scientific report if uh, if Scotch. Better for a better word, ages more well in space. <laughs> oh, that's a heck of a place to put your stash, put your entire uh, Scotch stash in orbit. All right, finding pirated movies online is has gotten and is now a lot harder. Google has put the brakes on. They pushed out a major search result. Excuse me, a major search update that uh, is going to slow you down in discovering t discovering pirated movies and TV shows. And you're definitely going to have just to go to the torrent sites now and search for it because what they're saying is is that like Pirate Bay and uh, Torrent, uh, what some of the sites are listing on here, uh, ba -ba -ba -bum, Movie 4K, a variety of different torrent sites. Basically, their, their organic search um, traffic has dropped like 99%. So uh, Google put the hammer on them, and of course this will make the uh, the movie industry very very happy with that. But uh, they um, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to find movies now that you're uh, that you're looking for. All right, this next article. Let me just share with you guys something before I show you the image, and this is for those of you that are watching. You know, I had spent uh, 24 years in the Navy. I uh, flew. Uh, just ten, th just right at ten thousand hours, and uh, if you do the math, uh, several years actually in the air, and uh, oftentimes uh, when I was uh, flying, I would be just as I am right now. I'd be in front of a computer screen, or I would be operating equipment. There wasn't a lot of window time per se. Um, I will say later that uh, I was able to get window time during certain phases of flights and so forth, and I always loved to sit. Um, in the window, we had these big bubble windows that you really had great views out of, um, and much different than a commercial airline where you got that little hole and you could actually stick your head up and look around, up, down. It was basically as it was called an observer window, and you could observe, you could see, you know, it really uh, the full view out the side of the aircraft you're sitting on. And I really did love, especially flying in the South Pacific. The cloud and cumulus cloud buildup build would just be beautiful. And you'd be flying along in between. You'd go between storms. It really was fantastic. And uh, flying commercial, oftentimes I'll find myself kind of staring out the window. And it's just not the same. Well, that could change. And uh, I am just absolutely excited on what the future could hold because they believe that in the near future they're going to be able to reduce the weight of aircraft considerably by installing basically um, 
a translucent body to the airplane. And um, the windows, they say, could be replaced with something more technologically advanced. The cabin of the airplane would be covered by maybe a flexible display screen made from OLEDs. The screens would project panoramic views from cameras attached to the outside of the plane. Passengers would be able to adjust their views so it wouldn't be limited to their seat position. The screen could also be used to watch videos and use the internet. But CPI hopes to develop these planes to be available for commercial use within the next 10 years. Visions for these planes is, is pretty cool. So basically, you're sitting in your seat, but you get to see the world fly by. That would be awesome. It really, really would. Now, some of you are a little bit scared of flying in at 25 or 30 or 35,000 feet. You may be a little, it may freak you out and we may have a little bit of a puke factor going on. But if this can be pulled off, if this really can be done and they can reduce the weight of the aircraft by as much as they say they can, now, which I would be very surprised because there's, a, you know, there it really, you know, well, if you think about it, there's certain load bearing structures within an aircraft. Obviously, the wing box, the wings, um, certain uh, stuff along the center line of the aircraft, depending on the aircraft's design. But usually the shell, the stuff that goes over the top, um, it's not as... Actually, you would be kind of surprised um, if you actually saw the ribs of an aircraft. Um, you know, there's not a lot between you and the outside. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, some uh, uh, aircraft-grade aluminum is basically the only thing that's between you and the, and the outside elements. And some ribs and reinforcing rods. But uh, this this could be really cool. Anyway, a link will be up in the show notes. You guys can check it out. Um, but uh, I just think this would be awesome from a from a viewpoint. You'd, I'd pay a premium to fly on that. There's a new um, initiative. And it's, uh, let's see if I can find the name of it here. Oh, crap. Did I lose it? It's called New Century Cities. And what it is, is a number of cities have gotten together and they formed a coalition to basically promote one gigabit per second internet. And uh, I, I, I saw this launch just a few days ago. And I was really excited to see this because... Um, nose is running a little bit here. I'm sorry. But they uh, basically have got a blog and member sites and member cities. And this is going to be all about promoting... Uh, one gigabit internet services in their own cities. And at the same time, they're talking about cities doing their own rollouts and not waiting for Google or, the, you know, the telcos. So uh, Honolulu was not on the list, but it's nice to see these cities kind of teaming up and sharing resources and thinking about the future of broadband for all of us. And uh, let me just read through some of the cities that are uh, participating here. Um, and it, it's, it's got a little interactive map. Uh, Amon, Idaho, Auburn, Indiana, Austin, Texas. Of course, they're already getting it from Google. Boston, Mass, uh, Centennial, Colorado, Champaign, Illinois, Chattanooga, Clarksville, Tennessee, Jackson, Tennessee, Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri, Lafayette, Louisiana, Leverett, Maine, Louisville, Kentucky, Montrose, Colorado, Morristown, ten uh, Tennessee, Mount Vernon, uh, Washington, Palo Alto, California, Ponica City, Oklahoma, Portland, Oregon, Raleigh, North Carolina, Rockport, Maine, San Antonio, Texas, Sandy, Oregon, Santa Cruz County, California, Santa Monica, California, Santa South Portland, Maine, Urbana, Illinois, Westminster, Maryland, Wilson, North Carolina, Winthrop, Minnesota was the, you know, the, some of the initial cities here that have basically signed up for this Next Century Cities uh, initiative. So um, I would encourage you to talk to, you know, your city managers and so forth and get them on this list. Get them to join up and be part of this initiative because there's all kinds of uh, stuff going on right now that is trying to limit the expansion of gigabit broadband across the country and, and muni broadband as well. It's a good article on there on Ars Technica that talks about some that very topic that I'll have linked up in the show notes for you tonight. At the same time, um, these cities that are part of this new century cities, they're, they're basically teaming up to fight 
the telcos, which is which is cool. All right, those of you that are Mac users, are you worried about malware on your Macs? Well, some people are. So there's a um, security and research development gent that put together a tool that reveals executables that automatically boot in Mac OS X. It's called the Knock Knock tool. It was an, it's a, an open source and built on an extensive framework to encourage the community to evolve the platform. And basically what this thing does is Knock Knock shows everything that is set to automatically execute when his Mac is rebooted. And he said, I've run it on some of my friends' computers and actually found a bunch of OS X malware on their computers. He says most Mac users are completely oblivious that their machines are being manipulated. So uh, definitely have this up. Definitely check it out. It's called Knock Knock. And uh, pretty cool stuff here. Again, Knock Knock tool. Ex-CBS reporter, and uh, those of you who remember, the very renowned uh, reporter Cheryl Atkinson said that uh, her computer uh, that she had used with CBS um, had information that was she said it was planted on her computer by the government, and that there was all kinds of um, tools that had been installed to essentially spy on her and everything she did on her laptop. Uh, pretty uh, serious uh, uh, accusations there. Uh, link will be up in the show notes on it. But uh, wow, that uh, just to think about that for a second, that uh, the government was uh, allegedly putting that type of material on a reporter's computer is a little bit uh, our lot discerning here. The United States has updated the Ebola monitoring guidelines, and uh, of course that gal that got quarantined, she wasn't very happy. But uh, this ever-evolving guideline, uh, I think this has changed 26 of uh, Revision 52, so uh, we'll see how this continues to uh, evolve here over time. And it looks like it's calmed down a little bit. Let's just hope it stays that way. Can you believe it that the Terminators turned 30? Holy smokes, 30 years! The first Terminator was in 1984. Hard to believe it's been that long, 30 years. I'm really feeling old. Hey, the FBI raided the house of the second leaker who provided terrorist watch list documents to the Intercept. Uh, they're not saying who this guy was or gal, but apparently the FBI identified an employee of a federal contracting firm suspected of being the so-called second leaker who allegedly turned over sensitive documents about the United States government's terrorist watch list to a journalist close associated with ex-NSA contractor Edward Snowden. And apparently they uh, executed a search warrant on this guy's house, kicked his door in. Uh, they're not saying who, what, or where, except it's being hinted maybe in Northern Virginia, which kind of makes sense. But holy cow, uh, no! If they, if they got somebody and they think he, that person's a person, uh, that person's in a deep, dark hole, <laughs> for sure. All right, those of you on the East Coast, uh, you almost got a uh, a cool sight tonight. But tomorrow, be aware, at 6.22 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, from Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia, Cygnus is going to be launching a uh, uh, basically a rocket to the International Space Station. The Monday's launch was scrubbed because of a boat in the uh, in the uh, downrange trajectory path. Uh, a sailboat had uh, went into the boundary area, so uh, they're going to try to uh, to take this uh, baby to the International Space Station tomorrow. So I guess it's getting dark pretty early there for you on the East Coast. So uh, you'll be able to see this launch. So uh, keep your eyes out if any. And I know we've got some listeners that live real close to Wallops. Give me some video. <laughs> And uh, that's cool. I have yet to be able to see a launch up and close and personal. Any of you guys uh, and, and gals, Alienware fans, well, they've come out with something pretty incredible here. And actually, I think it's a little bit off the hook. It's a, um, it's a graphics amplifier. Essentially, they're trying to life-proof a gaming laptop. So basically, when you buy a laptop, after a couple of years, the laptop is basically obsolete because of the graphics card. So Alienware has a solution called the Alienware Graphics Amplifier. The 299 graphics amplifier is basically a PCI 
times four slot in a box with an integrated 460 watt power supply. Plug in just about any desktop video card. Connect the box to the Alienware 13 laptop. Again, this is the only laptop on the market equipped with a required proprietary interface, and you get a desktop gaming machine. This is really cool. Really cool. Uh, does the laptop, I guess the laptop runs by itself with the, wow. So pretty slick stuff here. Not bad price. Of course, the video card cost an arm and a leg. But um, this is basically they're trying to make it so that you can upgrade graphic cards as you go and not have to go brand new, buy a brand new laptop. So uh, pretty slick stuff from the folks from, uh, from Alienware. New spin on it. That's for sure. Got to hurry up here tonight. Running a little bit behind. You know, there was a t when I used to go on the road, <laughs> my uh, MiFi that I had, I had the uh, the wife. You know, basically when you when you set up a MiFi, you give it uh, you know a name, and uh, I've had all kinds of different names for my MiFi. So basically, when it shows the, the Wi-Fi, when it shows up on Wi-Fi. And uh, when I used to travel, I used to call my, when people would look at their Wi-Fi uh, channels available, and there would be one that would say FBI. Well, that was my MiFi. <laughs> and uh, I thought if nothing else, I would either have two type of people. One, that people would be scared to connect to it, or two, the hackers that wanted in real bad. And uh, usually staying in a hotel was probably people like staying away from my, you know, from my Wi-Fi signal. But some knucklehead at Los Angeles International Airport ruined a plane full, plane full of people's day on Sunday. He named his Wi-Fi Wi network the Al-Qaeda Free Terror Network. <laughs> and some passengers saw it on his, wi -Fi, on his phone and told the stewardess, and they uh, sidelined the aircraft for a few hours. Um, probably not a smart thing to do to basically title your Wi-Fi the Al-Qaeda Free Terror Network. And it was spelled wrong. It was, oh, my God. Oh, wow. Uh, that was probably not a smart move. But people get, it's kind of sensitive about that. <laughs> and I got to thinking, maybe I shouldn't name my wife I stuff FBI anymore. Or right, Amazon is crowdsourcing publishing program. So basically, they're calling it Kindle Scout. Kindle Scout is basically allowing those of you that buy books to basically um, upvote votes that are going to be published on Amazon. And uh, you can read a few excerpts from an unpublished book. And if you like it, you can give a thumbs up. Each book across romance, science fiction, mystery, and thriller has 30 days to get as many votes as possible. After this period, Amazon checks which titles have the most backing and selects which will be published. Oh, that's pretty interesting here. So... Um, very interesting. Very cool. Um, I'm sure some authors are not going to be happy with this, but it is definitely a way to get noticed. And the world's fastest fiber line can support an Internet's worth of data. So right now, the currently the fastest commercial available fiber tops out at 100 gigs per second. That's really fast, as you all know. But it really isn't nearly a wide enough pipeline for all of our increasingly interconnected systems. And they've come up with a... It's really not new, but they've done some new testing with what's called multimodal fiber. And it's very, very exciting. It can pack 2,550 times as much data into the same glass strand. So what they've done here is um, they've, uh, they're using different wavelengths and different modes and different frequencies. All kinds of magic going on hardware and um and by software, at the same time, the fiber is a little different. So it won't work on current fiber. So this new fiber would have to be put down. But it's capable of uh, reaching speeds of 5.1 terabytes, which is just an incredible amount of, of traffic uh, per fiber. So that's uh, it's huge. So anyway, link will be up in the show notes. It'll probably be 20 years before we see it, but we're going to need that kind of bandwidth at some time in the near future. All right. Um, okay, here's that article. Microsoft Wireless Display Adapter. So uh, this is, again, available for pre-order. Let me bring up this page. 
it's fifty nine ninety five. And again, it's called Microsoft Wireless Display Adapter. It will wirelessly send what's on your phone, tablet, or laptop to your big screen HD TV or monitor. So it's basically a replication device. And uh, $59.95, and again, it's uh, on pre-order. I don't know when it's going to be available. I'm looking here. It's been announced about a month, but uh, I'll see if I can get a shipping date. But I'll probably pre-order one of these as well. This comes in. Uh, this will come in handy in more ways than one, to be quite honest with you. Um, it'll really make a difference in you know, eliminating a bunch of wires around here from some stuff I do. All right, scientists have also come up with a system where can they can detect a disease by dripping a, just a drop of urine down a tiny tube. And this is really remarkable. It's simple. It's a, a cheap lab on a chip test that can accurately detect markers of serious conditions like kidney disease or even prostate cancer using nothing but a drop of urine. And what really happens here is the device uh, features a long and incredibly thin tube that's lined with DNA sequences that will automatically hold on to disease markers in the fluid as it passes. So a drop of urine from a healthy donor placed at one end would flow uh, freely through the entire length of the tube. But if it were to stop along the way, where it stopped would immediately indicate the presence of markers for certain medical conditions. And it's basically doing DNA tracking. This is really exciting stuff. Um, I don't know if this is available on market, but it was uh, developed by Brigham Young. So uh, congratulations to them. This is just cool stuff that's going on in the space. How many of you went to a restaurant before and you look across and you see someone that's got a dish or something you're like, what is that? That looks yummy. That's what I want. I think we've all done that, right? We've seen a dish come out or you've ordered food and then you see someone else's food come out. And you're like, oh, I wish I would have ordered that. Well, some restaurants use what's called pop-up menus. And, you know, I think it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's kind of nice what they're doing. But to be honest with you, I would rather, instead of going to this expense and having this Art Deco pop-up stuff, and, I, and I, you know, it's it, this appeals to a certain type of person. And for those of you that are listening, it's a book that they open up, and it has a little pop-up that shows what you've ordered. It shows a drink or a plate of food, and it just kind of... It, it doesn't, it's not like an image, it's, it's uh, artistically done. And uh, I would rather just them bring me a tablet and I could look, as I'm looking through the menu, if I see something that looks interesting, tap on it and it shows me the plate and what it looks like. This is, you know, like in, in Japanese restaurants or Chinese restaurants, sometimes you're like, uh, or Thai, you're like, what is that? You don't quite know. There's even some Mexican dishes I don't 100% know. If I could just see a picture of it, I'm like, yeah, that looks good. Let me have that, right? It's got some fancy name. You know, these restaurants, you know, they try to be slick. You know, just, just tell me what it is. Don't use some, you know, uh, something, a row of fantage. You know, they're using these high polluting names or, or words that none of us understand. Just, you know, give me an iPad. Let me look at the menu. If I click on it and see the picture, yep, that looks good. Let me order it. Um, wouldn't it just make life easier? <laughs> We're visual people. Well, that's what we want to see. We want to see stuff. We don't want to read. Not in this day and age. <laughs> you see it, you believe it, right? All right. Uh, Twitter announced some uh, revenue this uh, this afternoon. They posted a record three hundred sixty one point two seven million dollars in revenue for the three months ending on September thirtieth, which was one hundred fourteen percent year on year increase. Its earning met expectations at, at point zero one per diluted share. Advertising brought in most of the haul, 87% of the total of that lump, 85% was from mobile advertising. And all in all, advertising revenue was up 109% again from the last year, uh, but not as good as 129% ad revenue hike on the previous quarter. So, uh, but they did lose money. Uh, see, no, 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 no. Yet, not as not so wide in the quarter, but it grew to 172%. They had 175.46 million shortfall. Wow. And it also ate a massive 520 million charge for stock based compensation expenses. So, boy, oh boy. Um, how did they have a 0.01% diluted? How do you have a, how do you have a, a, point one, a 1 cent diluted share earning when you lose money? I, I don't get that. But anyway, they are, uh, they're continuing to move forward, but burn a lot of cash. 
All right, what else? What's last year? Hey, Sony's big PS4 update's coming tomorrow with share play themes and YouTube. So this has been, it's been about a year since there's been an update to the PS4. So um, again, they're going to deliver a big one tomorrow. Version 2 of the PlayStation 4 firmware is coming out with some new features. So uh, make sure you get your uh, devices updated. And finally tonight, the sun, scientists are going crazy. They're uh, seeing the most activity out of the sun in like the last 25 years. And they've had a large, very large active region of the sun that's luckily kind of turned away from us a little bit. Um, that erupted with a X class fa uh, flare today, which is, you know, that's big. The X is up there uh, very, very high. Um, it's, it, that's at, you know, at the peak range of uh, solar flares. Um, they had a variety of M level flares as well, but uh, uh, I'll have that link up in the show notes. Lucky this thing wasn't pointed at us directly. We'll kind of get some side lobes, but uh, kind of cool stuff here going on with the sun right now. Most activity, again, they've seen in 24 years. All right, let me go ahead and, and load the emails that came in. We're running just a little long tonight. I jibber-jabbered too long at the beginning of the show. Take a shot of H2O here. Okay, so let me go ahead and put this, um, bring up the comments. I should have had this up before. I'm waiting for the email to load here. My apologies. Do you guys like it when I intermix non-tech stuff with the tech stuff? Tonight had a little bit, maybe too much, I think. I'm always self-criticizing myself later on. Why did I talk about that? All right, here we go. All right, so Bree sent me this link. And it was over on examiner.com. And let me load this, uh, this image. So we all know what UFOs look like, right? You know, the standard uh, flying saucer type thing. Well, according to the examiner.com, of course, this is a very, very reputable uh, publication. <laughs> um, they show a, a, a picture of a UFO going into the sun a earth-sized spacecraft seen orbiting and landing on the sun <laughs> uh so what are they are they the maintenance technicians for the sun do they go over there and uh do repairs on on the furnace uh, what is exactly these aliens that are able to withstand the fires of hell <laughs> Um, I think uh, we will all get a little giggle out of this, but uh, the conspiracy theorists say that the picture of the sun is uh, has an Earth-sized object going into the sun. More than likely, what it is, is it was taken in an infrared view as probably a solar flare or something. I don't know, but um, anyway, I thought you guys would get a chuckle out of it. Bree, thank you so much. Uh, you made my day. Um, when I got that, she also linked me up to a cool article that talk about a, um, um, another gentleman who broke, uh, a free fall record from space and how both these guys that, uh, not only the, the Red Bull guy, but, uh, Estes, uh, broke the speed of sound by exceeding 800 or basically Mach 1.23 in his recent, uh, his recent drop. And if you haven't seen the video on that, it's, uh. Some of it's pretty cool. They don't show the actual drop. They've only shown him going up in the weather balloon. He was lifted by a, a weather balloon and then uh, punched out, uh, or actually disconnected and, and dropped. Also got an email from Bill. He said, hey, Todd, have you seen a new Clever Don't Be That Guy video campaign by Trend Marco? With all the security breaches happening right now, Trend Micro wanted to help educate people on how they can protect themselves against things like identity theft, virus, and scams. These videos are centered around the hero, Mark Bright, going about his daily life while making everyday digital life mistakes. Mark makes a simple online mistakes that have potentially dangerous consequences. So it's a, it's a kind of an interesting video, trendmicro.com forward slash that guy. You know, they've got uh, the military. When I go on, uh, of course, I, I'm 
being retired military, living in Hawaii here in Guan base all the time. And they've got these big signs at the uh, front of the gates that usually have like a wreck car and then a poster on that says, don't be that guy. <laughs> so I guess the military is using that same campaign to try to educate the uh, military folks. Don't be that guy that's you know drinking and driving or doing stupid things. And I see these posters all over the place. Don't be that guy. Uh, quite the meme for sure. Okay, that's it for today. I want to thank all of you for tuning in and uh, being here with me during the show tonight. Uh, and I hope that you've had fun during the show. Fun enough to become an insider at geeknewcentral.com forward slash insider. Be part of our GNC 1000. And uh, hopefully the audio tonight on the show was not too bad. And uh, I definitely uh, will be tweaking it a little bit to dial it in. If you think it was perfect, uh, email me and say, Todd, it was perfect. Or... It was too high in the treble, too high on the bass, or too low on the bass, whatever it may be. i uh, love to hear you guys where you think the audio levels are. But uh, again, big thanks to Paul for assisting me and getting some of these audio stuff worked out. And hopefully, Paul, I don't jack it up tonight. Uh, but uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for, help, for, for the help. All right, everyone, we'll get out of here. Geeknews at gmail.com. Or on Twitter at Geek News. Again, my my name is Todd Cochran. It's been my pleasure to bring you the show this evening. Uh, wherever you may be listening, thank you so much for watching. Take care until next time. Take care and aloha. All right, YouTube, you're about to go bye-bye. Got hot in here all of a sudden. Okay, see you later, YouTube. Oh, had a little problem with the stream tonight.